This is the January episode of our series, The Chicken Year Month by Month, and this is our final episode. So come and join us and see what we're up to. Welcome to English Country Life. My name is Fiona and together with my husband Hugh, we run a homestead small holding here in South Lincolnshire in the UK and we breed these beautiful Buffalpington chickens. Now, as you can see, we've got a cockerel here and a hen and that means this time of year, we need to start thinking about fitting saddles to some of the hens. But what is a chicken saddle? I'm going to show you what one is and why we're actually using it. I'm then going to be showing you our isolation of Fat Max and talk you through why you might want to isolate a chicken from your flock and actually reassure you about why Fat Max is currently isolated from his lovely hens. I'm then going to be talking about the friendliness training we do with the chickens because this time of year is ideal to, for us to make sure that we can handle our chickens before we get into the breeding season. But what we're going to do first is have a look at those chicken saddles. This is Dura, one of our young hens, and you might be wondering what she's got on her back. Well, this is what's called a chicken saddle. And it's a very, very simple bit of kit, but it's very important for us as chicken breeders because this young man walking towards the camera at the moment, called DeWalt, our young cockerel, is really quite vigorous in mating with the chickens. So he walks onto their back, treads the chickens. That's what it's called when he actually stands on their back to mate. But that action of treading can put a lot of wear on their feathers. And in extreme cases, that can actually result in bald spots on the chicken's back. And we don't want that because going into summer with a bald spot, they could actually end up with sunburn. And chickens with sunburns, not a great idea. So what we do at the first sign of feather wear, which is where we see some down feathers actually sticking through the outer layer of beautiful golden feathers, we fit these saddles. And they're very, very simple because what they've got is they've got two straps which fit over the wings of the hen and then they've got this little bit of uh, canvas which sits on their back. Now the really important thing to ensure is to measure these saddles very carefully because the chickens have an oil gland just about here just at the bottom of their tail and they need to be able to access that to preen pro properly. So measuring the chicken saddle and making sure it fits is really really key but Jura is going to be protected and she's not going to end up with any bald spots but for now I think she's just dying to get at the mixed corn treats so let me sort that out there we go she's happy again here are two options for you for chicken saddles well what's the difference this one has got fleece backing and this one has got plain canvas now do you need the fleece backing well the reality is no, you don't. The canvas is more than sufficient because all you're trying to do is provide a barrier between the cockerel's feet when he treads the hens and the feathers on the chicken's back in the first place. And this canvas is more than sufficient to do that. But personally, I prefer the fleece simply because I believe it provides a softer landing and a bit of cushioning for the hens when the cockerel treads them. But the reality is they've got a really good layer of soft feathers anyway, so it's probably not necessary. But let's have a look at how you fit these. What you'll notice is there's two loops here and this is where the hen's wings will fit through. And then this will sit between the shoulder blades of the hen and what you need to do is make sure that lens there to the end of the saddle is not too long that it covers the oil gland at the bottom of the tail but you also don't want it to be sh too short because you want to ensure that when the cockle lands on the hen's back that his feet hit the saddle and not the hen's feathers. So how do you fit it? Well it's quite simple. You'll notice one side is completely sewn in place and the other side has a popper. What you do is you pull the popper and then this tape fits through a loop on the back so you can make it a little bit loose, fit that over one chicken's wing, pull the tape so that sits securely over the first wing, then you can fit that just by looping it over the top of the second wing and that should be fitted to your hen. Now if you want full instructions and a lot more detail we do have a specific chicken saddle video that you can watch and I'll pop that in the links above. 
This is another version of the chicken saddle being modelled by Jura. The main saddle is exactly the same, but it has the addition of two pads that sit over the top of the hen's wings. This saddle is useful if your cockerel places his feet high on the hen's back and prevents additional feather wear at the tops of the wings. There are choices of saddle and lots of sizes available out there, so it's about choosing the right one that's right for your hens. Let me introduce you to Fat Max, one of our young cockles. We actually have two cockles, but Fat Max is here in splendid isolation in his own greenhouse, and that took quite a lot of preparation. But why is he in here? Well, there's three big reasons for separating a chicken out from the rest of the flock. The first is if they're ill. And I have to say, the best advice I can give you is if you suspect your chicken is ill in any way, even if you don't know what that illness is, separate them from the flock. If by the time you've identified it, it turns out that illness is communicable, the rest of your flock could be ill and you'll have a much bigger problem on your hands. So separate them as soon as you can into their own coop and own space. The second reason for separating your chicken might be injury. Now, that could be that they've got a cut and actually a bleeding cut is something which is very attractive to other chickens in the flock. And what they may do is actually attack, attack the chicken and make the problem a whole lot worse because red is incredibly attractive. But way back in summer, we had a different type of injury and that was a mechanical injury to a chicken we affection, affectionately called Limpy Chick. We came out one morning and she was limping horribly but she just needed some time to get over it we did have a checked out there was no break and there was no um, injury to her tendons however it did seem to be she had a very bad strain so we isolated her in her own coop and run for a little bit of time just just to give those muscles time to recover so she could run back with a flock in a reasonable amount of time now, why have we got Fat Max here? He's in here for the third reason, and that's because our chicken year has come full circle and we are fertility testing our young cockerels. Now, normally each year we have between 12 and 15 hens and we bring forward two young cockerels to the stage of fertility testing. But two cockerels for 15 hens is actually not easy. Um, a little bit too much so we want to cut it down to just one cockle so we will fertility test now fat max is in here and we're testing his sibling called dewalt and dewalt has come through his test with 100 percent fertility so that means we're actually not going to fertility test fat max we're just going to take dewalt forward because that is an amazing result it's clearly we can't get better than 100 percent and that means young fat max here is going to a new home he's actually been bought and tomorrow he's going to a new home roughly about 10 miles from where we live and he's joining a flock a mixed flock they've got quite a few buff orpingtons but they've got some morans and other chickens too and he's really going to be spoilt rotten for the rest of his life This time of year, it's really, really important that I spend quite a bit of time with the chickens and we do handling training. Now, why are we doing that? Well, once we get into the broody hen season, we are going to want to be checking the broody hens over to make sure that they're healthy. And we're also going to be wanting to check on the eggs to make sure that there's no problems there, that none of the eggs have cracked and they're still intact. And once the eggs hatch, we're also going to want to make sure that the broody hens are happy for us to pick the chicks out and check them over too. So it's really, really important that they're comfortable being handled. 
And at this time of year, we've got a lowest density of chickens. So it's a great time to actually invest in coming in, sitting down with them, making sure the chickens are comfortable around me. Now, clearly they're crowding around me at the moment. So they're not afraid of me in the slightest. Sky's on my lap and she was happy to be picked up and all the chickens are just trying to get close to me. Now there is a bit of bribery going on here because I do have mixed corn here. So that does encourage them to come closer. But the reality is, it's not the mixed corn. That's just something to get them to come to me in the first place. What is really important is the investment in time. Oh, and now I've got rhubarb on my knee too, as Sky. So um, there's more and more of them just happy to be around me. And it does mean that I'm gonna be able to handle their chicks once the broody hen season starts. So it's worth the investment. Before we wrap up this entire series, I want to show you this. This is the Nestera wagon and it's like nothing else on the market. Now it's now available in the UK and the US and it will shortly be available in the EU. Now, it has to be said, we've had this for a number of months because Nestera very kindly sent us their prototype test. And what we've discovered is this is our chicken's choice. We've got so many other coops. We've got coops that Hughes built, which are incredible. We've got commercial wooden coops that we bought and we've got other Nestera coops. But this one was where all the chickens wanted to be. And how do we know that? Well, the first indication was in summer when Marshmallow was in here with her chicks and Licorice, who was in a different coop, decided she wanted to join her. So she actually rehoused herself and actually stayed with Marshmallow inside this coop with both of them raising their chicks in it. So that was our first indication. Now the second indication was when we moved this coop into this flock down enclosure and it has to be said that's easy because it's on wheels and even though it's nine millimeter thick recycled plastic it's very very easy to move and maneuver so moving it around is not a problem but as soon as we got into the flock down enclosure we had a really really cold snap and the chickens at that point normally want to huddle together because that gives them extra warmth and where did they go they didn't stay in their second coop the chickens in the second coop all relocated over here now clearly it was a bit too crowded so i had to separate them out but this is where they wanted to be this is where they chose to be so I am absolutely loving this coop. Now, like all Nestera coops, and this is going to sound like an ad, so I'm not going to apologise for that because there's some great features. The first is that it's got a 25-year industry-beating warranty. Find me another coop manufacturer that gives you 25-year warranty on their coops. There isn't one. There's only Nestera that does it. They're made with 100% recycled plastic and that's made with green energy. So they are fitting with our ethos of trying to be sustainable sustainable on our small holding and of course being plastic they're red mite resistant now we will do a full review on this on this coop very shortly but I just want to show you inside so you can see what it looks like the first thing to notice about the wagon is that the whole front door opens so all you do is pull these bolts back and open the door and that makes it really easy for cleaning. Now inside you might notice at the moment we've got no perches but that's because this is a coop that our Buff Orpingtons like to sleep in and they don't like to perch and it's not a problem because I poop pick the coop every single day so they're always lying on fresh bedding but if you do want perches there is the option of putting three in and they're all secured in place with these linch pins and all you do is actually pop them into some ready-made slots inside and that's enough to keep them secure. Those perches aren't going anywhere. Now you can fit eight large chickens or 15 bantams inside this coop without any issues at all and there's two very spacious nest boxes at the back and as I say this has been amazing. The chickens love this coop, it really is their choice. Well, that's a wrap on this entire series and we have loved making it and I hope you've had a huge amount of information for it. And don't forget to come back and join us for videos on specific topics. Now, if you do have an idea for that topic or if you've got a question for us, leave it in the comment section down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, leave us a thumbs up. That really helps the channel. Now, if you're not already a subscriber, hit subscribe and the bell icon, completely free service, and you get to know of every new video as soon as it goes live. But for now, 
Thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time.